Absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful. I'm happy with that. Stay lean and feel healthy all year round. It'll leave you feeling light and help you lose weight. Hi, I'm Michael Cull. On tonight's show, Penny Lomas and I will be whizzing around the Sports and Fitness Expo. Also, we have Peter Singe, a guy who's dramatically lost weight and changed his life through healthy eating and exercise. Craig Ellis will be doing a delicious pork and apple dish, and I'll be making a breakfast to die for, Birch and Muesli. So let's get ready, lose weight, and feel great. Breakfast. They say it's the most important meal of the day. They say, eat like a king for breakfast, like a prince for lunch, and like a pauper for dinner. Breakfast means to break the fast. Today I'm doing a beautiful birch and muesli. It's simple to make, and you can do it at home, and you can eat it to help you lose weight. So first thing I do is I've got two apples. Now I'm using Granny Smith's apples. So what I do is I chop my apples like so. so I'm going to try and julienne my apples, so I want them nice and thin, like matchsticks. So apples are a great source of fibre, and also great source of vitamin C. Now this is really important, and also a great refreshing meal. So now you can do this with a V slicer if you don't feel like your knife skills are that good, but you can. Do it with a knife, just go really slowly and remember to always respect a sharp knife. So I've got, I've got them in little piles there, all ready to go. And we go, I'm going to show you how to julienne. So when you're julienning anything, it means to cut something that looks like a bit of a matchstick. So basically use the claw grip like that and then just slowly keep your knife onto your board and just like that. So you're See, so you're letting your knife slide across like that. And just start off really slowly and then speed up as you go along. There's your julienne. And as you can see, it looks like a matchstick. It's nice and fine and really soaks up the flavor of the apple juice and the oats. And got a little bit of crunch to it too. So now, to stop it browning, I'm going to use some apple juice. Now this birch and muesli has got cloudy apple juice. Cloudy apple juice has got a really nice subtle flavour. So I'll put in about two litres of cloudy apple juice. There's my cloudy apple juice and my apples all chopped up in there. They've been nicely julienned. Next, I'm going to get about 900 grams of rolled oats. Now the beauty of rolled oats is it'll cost you about $1.50 at the supermarket. In goes my rolled oats like that, and there's about 900 grams there. Next, I'm going to use some figs. I love figs, there's a lot of vitamins and minerals. Again, we're gonna, we're gonna try and cut them up again, so remember using that nice grip where you're You've got the claw grip and you're cutting them up nice and long. So as you can see, when they're nice and long like this, one fig will go a long way. And also you've got lots of nice different textures in there. So there's my figs, in go my figs. That's about roughly 100 grams of figs. Now I'm using Turkish apricots as I use Turkish figs. Just remember when you're using your knife, just to be careful all the time. So there's your apricots. Right, next I'm using almond meal. So I'm using about 100 grams, in goes the almond meal. So almond meal is great because this gives it the consistency and the flavor of a cake. You use almond meal in a lot of gluten-free cakes. Now to add to it, I'm gonna give it a little bit more with hazelnut meal as well. So I get this nutty flavor going on with the apples and everything like that. Then I go on to the cinnamon. I'm using a Dutch cinnamon. This is real cinnamon. This gives it the kind of apple pie flavor. Some of my personal training clients have said, oh, it tastes like apple pie. They eat it for morning, 
lunch and dinner. So, but you know, you can you can you can do that if you want to. But I would suggest just have it just have it for breakfast. So I'm using about two tablespoons. I'm using another hundred grams of sultanas. So it's all pretty well assembled there. Next, all I do now is I give it a nice mix. So you just see, so make sure it's all mixed properly like that. And then, just get your lid and get this into the fridge. Because what will happen now overnight, all these flavours will start to soak in to the oats and they'll all start to marry together. So I suggest soaking it overnight. So I put it into the fridge. So that's been soaking overnight. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's broken down a lot and the apricots have changed and it smells a lot different to what it did previously. Now, I'm gonna to put together a serving that you would have on a daily basis. So to be about, let's have a look. We're looking at about 200 grams, which is a nice size serving. So we're at 160, that's about, that's a good serving. That's about 200 grams. So you'd have that for breakfast and you might have that with a little bit of apple or something along those lines. Now, I'm gonna construct one that you might have on the weekend that's a little bit different. It's like a trifle bircher. Very exciting because it's got a lot of different things. So I might start with my first layer of bircher muesli. So I'll put that into there like that. And then I go for my second layer. I've made a strawberry coolie with xylitol. Xylitol is an excellent sweetener that's all natural and occurs in the body as well. It's, it comes from the birch tree. Then I'll go again, another layer of bircher. And then I'll go for a layer of a good pot set yogurt. I'm using a good pot set yogurt here. So what I'll do is I'll I'll put a little bit into a bowl here, like so. And then I'll just give it a bit of a mix around. So as you can see, the consistency of it's a lot smoother now. So then I'll put some bit of yogurt. And then one more layer of bircher on the top. Now, I've made a little apple, apple pie mix. Now this has been made with xylitol, so I'll put a little bit on the top. So you get that beautiful apple pie flavor. And then a nice strawberry. So there you have it. There's your birch and muesli for the weekend with a coolie, with a good pot set yogurt and some fruit on top. So try this for the whole family or for yourself. It's a terrific start to the day if you want to lose weight and stay healthy. After the break, we're going to have some fun at the Sports and Fitness Expo. Also, we have Peter Singe, a guy who's dramatically lost weight and changed his life through healthy eating and exercise. Thank you. 
Oxygen Magazine is a magazine about inspiration, motivation, great recipe, women's health and fitness. Today I'm here with one of the ambassadors for Oxygen, Penny Lomax. Penny, how are you today? Thanks, thanks for having me. Tell me, if I was a woman, what would I get out of Oxygen Magazine? Oxygen Magazine is a great magazine for females of all ages and all capacities. It's about empowering females to get into the weight, weight training area, yep. um, lift weights in good form. It's about diet tips, motivation, clean recipes. And we've got cover girls and ambassadors going through the magazine to inspire us. So if you were a female starting off an exercise program, could you read Oxygen and get some really good tips? Definitely. We've got workouts going throughout, step-by-step -step guides with pictures, so you can take your magazine with you and do the workout in the gym. What are some of the recipes you've got in Oxygen? Wow, they're all about clean eating. So it's about replicating those naughty foods that you miss when you're dieting and making them clean. So we've got clean burgers, clean pizzas, um, truffles and protein balls and protein bars, yeah. Truffles, and, you yeah, sold me. I had you. <laughs> and we've got some great post-workout nutrition, so how to put a shake together to what? fuel your workout. Excellent. Thank you very much, Benny. There you have it. Oxygen Magazine, a terrific magazine to get started into an exercise program. Tell me, what's your number one tip for a healthy breakfast and weight loss? Well, for healthy breakfast, look, I'm a big fan of pancakes, but I've put a bit of a twist on pancakes. Instead of flour, I use protein powder. So you can have banana pancakes with protein powder. So they're keeping them low fat, obviously high in protein. And if you like pancakes, then you are ticking all the boxes there. And what about your number weight loss tip when you're getting in top shape? Look, I think it's about that 70-30, you know. 70% of the time you're conscious of what you're eating and, and, and your diet. And the 30% of the time when you're a little bit more liberal, you're focusing more on portion control. And even you can have the, you know, have occasional beer or a hot dog or a pie at the footy, but you don't have three or four of them and you don't have it every week. So moderation. It's, it's moderation, it's about balance. So it's, I use that 70-30 rule. How important would you say fitness and food are going together? Who else oh, definitely. Look, if you're, if you're looking to keep healthy and even lose some weight, today. it's 80% diet. So on that subject, what's your best yeah. breakfast? Only one ribbon, yeah. Ooh, only my one best breakfast, I'm eggs. an eggs person. Me too. I love okay. my eggs and I actually like some eggs, a bit of avocado right. and some toast. The and I've just discovered a new way to cut the middle of the toast and put the egg in the middle. And <laughs> I would never eat anything processed and anything with sugar. So some, a good breakfast that contains lots of protein, maybe three organic eggs. Something three to eggs. Get, three eggs is always good. <laughs> Weight loss is to develop as much lean body tissue, mm -hmm. that's muscle, as you can. So of course, weight training is the way to go, definitely. Healthy breakfast, I guess, will consist of oats for the carbs, complex carbs, of course. And some people like to mix a little bit of protein powder in that for a bit more protein, a bit more flavor. Cool, so would you have oats and water for breakfast? Yes, yeah, definitely. I like to mix it with a bit of uh, Max's uh, chocolate protein powder. That's my personal favourite. I love chocolate. Exactly, of course. <laughs> what about your number one weight loss tip, David? Another one would be cutting out the carbs, I guess. For breakfast, it's fine to have carbs. Otherwise, I'd say after maybe 2 o'clock, cut the carbs out and more veggies, slightly carbs, but more of the chickens, the tuna, and the type of proteins. That's what you want to focus on. Now we're just going to have a look in the store at all the fashions at Rider Wear. Can you teach someone like me to dance who's uncoordinated? Absolutely. We are experts in that. Who told you you are uncoordinated? Everybody. <laughs> I'm talking to a personal training client of mine about his weight loss journey. How are you today, Peter? I'm very well, thanks, Michael. How are you? Not too bad, thanks. Tell me, what did you weigh and how much weight have you lost? Well, look, I, probably about 15 years ago, I was weighing about 87 kilos in reasonable sort of shape. And then I got into management consulting. Uh, and, and when I got to the management consulting, like food buffets became easy for me to get yeah. to. Uh, I would travel a lot. There was no 
There was no uh, need for me to exercise, no other excuses I started making. All of a sudden, within a couple of years, I went from 87 kilos to 95, 96, 97, and that became normal. So that was just normal part of life. Yeah. So how did it feel carrying the extra weight? So I didn't know it was any different at that stage because I, I probably put it on over a couple of years. Yeah. And it was like, it was, like I say, it was kind of normal for me to do it because, you know, I would go out, would drink a lot and all those all things. All those that, corporate things that you do. All those corporate things that you do. Uh, and what I do is as, as I got bigger, I was buying more clothes. Yep. And that became a norm for me. It didn't actually feel that bad. I didn't think it felt that bad anyhow. So what was the trigger point that made you think, uh, that's it, I've had enough, I want to change my life? Yeah, probably about uh, 12 months ago, I was, I went to put one of my quite expensive suits on Yeah. and I couldn't get the, the belt up, it was too tight. And that afternoon, or that evening, I was watching a, a program from America about obese people. Yes. And I remember thinking to myself, you know what, I think that's me. <laughs> that could be you. Yeah. That's the point, and, and, and that's it. Uh, that was it. That was the, the, the time when I realised I needed to lose weight. I think I remember you coming into my office, and you look like a man on a mission. In fact, in fact, it happened about probably about two months before that. I started coming to the gym and started working out, but I wasn't losing any weight. I wasn't. I, it, in my mind, I thought all I had to do was go to the gym. What I didn't realise is I had to stop eating the garbage that I was eating and start eating better food. How has your eating normal. plan changed? Well, the, the eating plan changed after I spoke to you. Yeah. And that's the first session that we had was we sat down and we went, you, you sat me down and asked me, what are you eating? And I told you, and then you said, okay, we need to change some things. So you changed my breakfast and what I ate for lunch and then, you know, what I had for dinner. But you also changed the snacks. So I was never hungry. Yep. I was just eating better food. Yep. So how do you find it in a corporate environment when you, you go to these beautiful hotels with the buffets? Yeah. To start off with, it was it was difficult. I, you know, it was for me, it was really hard. I had to go in there and I still ate all of those you know, bad foods that you shouldn't be eating, all, all the fried foods, et cetera, et cetera. Now, though, it's getting much more easier because I understand what foods are good for me and I understand uh, what foods are bad for me and how they're processed, if they're processed incorrectly or they're processed with fats and so forth, I know I can't eat them. So now it's not so difficult. I just go to the buffet and I take the things that I want to eat. That you want to eat? Yeah. So what's your number one meal now that you're at your goal weight? Well, you taught me the best meal of the day has to be breakfast. So what's in the breakfast? Well, why don't I show you? Sounds great. Let's get into the kitchen. One of the things that I'm learning from you is that keeping it simple. Yep. Keeping it nice and clean and keeping it simple is the way to go. And so what I do is I have this for, for breakfast every morning. Every morning and every you don't morning. get sick of it? I don't get sick of it because I've got all, you know, I've got fruit, I've got honey, I've got yogurt, I've got all the things that I actually do enjoy eating yep. uh, in, in the meal. Uh, the base product, which is just oats, mm -hmm. is quite boring by itself. Yep, so you put a bit of that but, in? But all I Let's do, have a look at the weight. So we'll have a look at what, what we're, so at the moment we're at naught. So for me, and still a big bloke, I'm still, you know, just yeah. over 90 kilos. I just only use a, 200 pounds or yeah, so. A third of a cup of oats. I put yeah. that in there. And then, excuse me, I just. Bit of water. Half a cup of water. So just to wet it a little bit. Just to wet it. And there's, there's your energy. That's yeah. a good source of complex carbohydrates. So that'll get you going? Yeah. We've added the water, we've added the oats, and it's just simply a matter of putting it in the microwave for two minutes. Microwave does come in handy. Absolutely. So microwave it on high for two minutes. The next part of it is just the fruit. And the fruit's really, really simple to do. On Sunday afternoons, I normally spend 10, 15 minutes just cutting up different pieces of fruit. Yep. I have watermelon, rock melon, uh, honeydew, mm -hmm. I have strawberries. I normally get some grapes and put it all together, and some pineapple as well. Okay. And that whole, that whole container there cost me $14 on Sunday. I kept the, deliberately kept the receipt to have a look at it. It cost me $14. That does all of my breakfasts for the week, as well in the afternoons if I want to have a snack with just some, uh, some fruit and some yogurt. Just put them together, a bit of honey, put it together, and I've, I've made myself a simple snack in the so afternoon. So you're organised, and it's not expensive. I think the microwave's, microwave's calling done. us. Okay, so that's the oats, that's the oats done. Yep. 
Uh, now, normally what I'd do is just simply put as but much fruit. fruit, and Michael, you can tell me if, if I'm correct or not. That's a good portion. Now we're, we're looking at about 150 to 200 grams so yep. far. Cool, so from there, all I then do is put some yogurt, yogurt on top, just to give it a little bit more flavour. Um, I use Chobani, I actually like Chobani, but I imagine that all the other brands of Greek yogurt. That's a great, that's a great yogurt. It's got a high, very high in protein. Yep. And then on top of that, I put a little bit of honey. And that's it. Coming up after the break, Craig and I will be making a delicious pork and apple dish. Craig's cooking a pork and apple gravy today. We're doing a pork fillet with apple and onion, which has its own gravy from apple juice and chicken stock. What do we do to get this going? Okay, um, this is the pork fillet, um, which has just been seasoned with black yeah. pepper and salt and pepper. Okay. Um, and we've got the pan here, just preheating with olive oil in it. You want the pan to be uh, hot enough so it seals. So it gets that shh. Yeah. So oh, that, I can hear that. Hear that sizzling. <laughs> If you don't get the right heat into the pan, you will actually stew the meat. Yeah. And actually all the juices will come out and then render the meat tough. So we're just, just cooking this. We just want to um, get that sealed on both sides. So yeah. probably, you know, you're looking at two minutes either side. So you can see that we've got a nice golden colour here yeah. on the pork. So um, we're just going to cook this for a few more minutes and we'll take it out of the pan. Uh, and then we're going to uh, carry on with the rest of the dish and add the pork back later to the pan. Yeah. We'll just take that out of the pan now and just put that aside. Yeah. And um, that's probably two thirds of the way through its cooking process. It does need to have more. So we can just add the onion to the pan. We just want to, you know, just saute that. Onion's always nice, it creates that sweet flavour, is it? That's right. So yeah. we'll, and we'll also just put um, the apple which has been cored, um, and yeah. or peeled and cored, and cut very thinly. Um, so that can just be placed in the pan as well, and that will just uh, cook through. Put that in there. Look, this is getting really um, quite glossy now. It's starting yeah, to uh, okay, so that's so, the colours changing. Yeah, colours changing. So we can put uh, a spoon of flour in now. And so you're using a, just a normal? Would you like to put this yeah, just sure, one spoon, probably just about that. Okay. Just up uh, the end here. Just there? Yeah, that's fine. And then. So we can just add just a drizzle of oil to that. Yep, a bit that's more. Fine. Bit more, or yeah, just a bit more. Just, you just want enough just to bring it together. So that's that's cooking away nicely there, and that that's simmering away. So you, what you want to do is cook the flour out of the cook starch. Cook it out. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you end up with that floury taste. Yeah. So that that's looking really good. So now we can add the apple juice. So I've just got a cup of apple juice. Yeah. And it's just um, you can use any apple juice really. Um, just pour that in. I think even the cloudy apple. Yeah, I love too. the cloudy. I, I like so that just too. Just pouring that in. And you can just see that. If you can give that to you, you can add sure, that. Sure, mate. Add that and now. And you let me know when you want yeah, me to go. Yeah, put it in now. 
A little bit more? All of it, yeah. All of it? Yeah. So that's thickening up really quickly. So we'll just change I to like a... the way it's all coming together. <laughs> so, and then maybe just that uh, chicken stock there, Mike, we'll just pop that in too. The whole lot can go in. The whole lot. Yep. So you can just see that making its own uh, gravy. sauce gravy. Now what we do now is just pop the pork back in. Yeah. So on the plate, all the juice is still there, which is great. All that goes back in. Terrific. So you've got pork juice, you've got chicken stock, and you've got apples. So there's right. so quite complexity of flavours, <laughs> even though it's a simple dish. Yeah, correct. So we're just sort of spooning the mixture over the top of the, the uh, pork fillet medallions. We've got whole beans today. Just dropping them into boiling salted water, just a pinch of salt. So they will um, take about five minutes. This is ready now, Michael, so I'm just going to turn this off. Looking nice. The beans are ready. Um, okay. So there we have the beans, still a great colour. Yeah, they're still really a nice green. Yeah, you don't want to cook, you don't want to lose that nice green colour. Yeah. So I'll let you sure, show mate. me how to right, refresh so. that. So basically what I'll do here is I'll just drain my beans in here and then I've got my iced water over here. So I'll put my beans in the iced water like that just for a little while and that will what that does is actually stop the cooking process. So then I'll go back into the colander and just just like that. So there's the veggies and fantastic. Pretty well ready. So we'd let those drain, will we? And yeah. we can dish up the uh, pork. Usually three pieces, like three medallions, would be a standard serve for a hungry yep. person who's training, for instance. <laughs> like us. <laughs> so yeah, just, just put it in the middle of the plate. So about 100, 120 grams, 140 grams. It's a good serving size. And you haven't you're not having carbs with it, so you can afford to be a little bit more generous, yep. I think. And serving it with some green beans on the side is really nice, or broccoli, or something like that. So just like that. That's lovely. And they, as you can see, the nice greenness of these vegetables, blanched veggies. And just for a little bit of colour on the top of the... I'll just put some chives in the middle. 